Okay, it is 7.32 p.m. on Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. Uh, good evening, my name is Christian Klein. I'm the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I'd like to call this meeting of the board to order. I'd like to confirm all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, members of the Board of Appeals, Roger DuPont. Here. Patrick Hanlon. Here. Kevin Mills. Here. Aaron Ford. Here. And Stephen Reblack. Here. Thank you all. Um, officials from the town, uh, Rick Valarelli, the board's administrator. Here. Uh, Vincent Lee from the Inspection Services. Here. And Kelly Lenema, the senior planner from the Department of Planning and Community Development. Here. Good to see you all. Um, I'd just like to verify that there are people here for the three uh, hearings we have scheduled for this evening. Um, is there someone here appearing on behalf of 12 Christine Road? Here. Thank you, sir. Is there someone here appearing on behalf of 34 Marathon Street? Here. Here. And appearing on behalf of 53 Pine Ridge Road. Here. Okay, so this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted, rem conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020. The order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. Public bodies may meet remotely, so long as reasonable public access is afforded, so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference. Other participants are participating by computer audio or telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name, or another identifier. Please take care not to share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. As chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. <clears throat> Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as monotony, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board acknowledges that the town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodlines of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massasoit territories today. We'll start this evening with several administrative items, including the approval of minutes, the approval of decisions, and possibly discussion of proposed revisions to the rules and regulations of the board. These items relate to the operation of the board and as such will not be, will be, excuse me, and will be conducted without input from the general public. The board will not take up any new business on prior hearings, nor will there be the introduction of any new information on matters previously brought before the board. After introducing each item, I'll invite members to provide comment, questions, or motions. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly. If members wish to engage in discussion with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care not to identify yourself. So with that, moving over to the agenda. Um, agenda item number two. <clears throat> So this is uh, the approval of meeting min minutes. So um, Mr. Valarelli had circulated to members of the board the, uh, the minutes which have been prepared for the March 11th, April 8th, April 13th, and April 20th meetings, those four meetings. Um, I believe several people have submitted um, some edits and corrections to those minutes. Um, are there any further 
Um, corrections or input from the board on the, those four sets of minutes? Uh, Steve Ravalak, Mr. Chair. Yes, Steve. I noticed one, one typo that uh, I did not catch earlier. Okay. So this would be in the minutes for April 13th. And on page 22, um, in the one, two, three, fourth paragraph where I'm speaking, uh, Mr. Revelak states he made a trip over to Ryder Street. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryder should be spelled with a Y. Ah. Nothing, and, but I, and I have nothing further. Got it, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So with that correction to the April 13th minutes, um, may I have a motion to accept the minutes from March 11th, April 8th, April 13th as just amended, and April 20th? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. A uh, second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. I'll do a vote of the board to approve the minutes. Mr. DuPont? I can see your lips moving. I don't hear you, but <laughs> I got you. Uh, Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. O'Rourke is not with us this evening. Mr. Revelak? Aye. Mr. Ford? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. That moves us to item number three, which is the approval of the decision for 59 Mount Vernon Street. Um, this is a decision that was uh, very well prepared by Mr. Hanlon from our board. Uh, I know that was circulated. There were a couple comments that had come back on that to Mr. Valerelli. Are there any further um, comments on the proposed mm -hmm. decision for 59 Mount Vernon Street? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve the uh, decision for 59 Mount Vernon Street as uh, submitted and edited? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Uh, a vote of the board, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Revelak? Aye. And the chair votes aye. So that decision is approved. That will now be, um, <clears throat> the signature will go out through DocuSign to the board and then we will have that filed with the town clerk's office. Um, brings us to item four, uh, which is a discussion of proposed revisions to rules and regulations. We discussed this a little bit last time. Um, I don't think there's been any adjustment since that time. So unless anybody has anything they would specifically like to address in regards to that, I was just gonna pass on that for this evening. We will pass on that. Okay, we're now turning to the public hearings on tonight's agenda. Here's some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicant to introduce themselves and make their presentation to the board. I'll request that members of the board ask what questions they have on the proposal. And after the board's questions have been answered, I will open the meeting for public comment. So the first hearing is agenda item number five, docket 3657, 12 Christine Road. Um, and if I can ask the applicant to identify themselves and tell us what they would like to be doing. <clears throat> Good evening, board. Uh, my name is Fernando Carrero. I'm the owner of Volandry Contracting here in Arlington. And the property that I am uh, presenting to you for some modifications is 12 Christine Road. And the proposed on the plot plan, um, I want to put a farmer's porch in the front of the house. And right now, meeting the requirement of the setback, I could get about four feet, 0.1, to, to keep the setback around 25.1. And my, uh, my proposal is to bring it to six feet so that the new setback will be uh, at 23 feet. Because me personally, in my own home, I have four feet and it's not something that we can very much use because it's a little too small. So I wanted to give it a little bit more space so that People could sit out there and be more comfortable. And for the curb appeal, I think the house would look really 
presentable with this farmer's porch and usable, especially being in a circle where it's a lot of kids will be able to play outside. And it seems like a lot more parents these days are spending more time in their front yards and the kids riding their bikes, especially in that neighborhood. So to me, I'm looking for that um, additional foot and a half or so to get me to six feet uh, for the front porch, the 20.1 feet will remain the same. And is that the, the only aspect of the project that requires a special permit? That's it. Okay. Um, Mr. Valerelli? Yes. Just want to confirm. So the board may um, increase the depth of a front porch into the front setback no farther than, I believe it's two feet. Is that correct? By special permit? That's correct. So by right, he can do a 25 square foot uh, farmer's porch, uh, vestibule, anything larger than that, that protrudes into the required setback is allowed by special permit only. Thank you. Are there, um, before I ask for questions, the board just wanted to make sure that the, the applicant received the, uh, today, the report prepared by the Department of Planning and Community Development. Just wanna make sure you had received and reviewed that. Yes. Okay. Um, are there questions from the board? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon? Um, just to try to clarify what is and isn't before us, uh, I gather, that I, I take it that the only thing that is, that is the reason why the applicant is here is uh, the desire to get extra space on the, on the porch. Uh, this is a project in the process of construction. Um, it doesn't already exist. And I, I assume it's true that every, with, except with respect to, to the porch, um, everything else is, uh, could be done by right. Uh, and what I'd like to clarify is whether or not it's within the province of this application for the board to consider anything other than the unique issues that arise from the question whether to approve the porch or not. In other words, there are other kinds of things that, that may be at issue. Open space could be an issue, who knows? Um, but I, I gather that those things, except insofar as they relate to the reasons for either extending, allowing for this porch or not, wouldn't be relevant to our hearing tonight. Is that correct? That is my understanding. You see Mr. Valerelli nodding in the affirmative as well. Correct, Mr. Hammond. Are there other questions or comments from the board? Mr. Revelak. Uh, yeah, just one comment and a couple of questions. Uh, so the comment regarding the, uh, the application, the uh, form where we, uh, where the six special permit criteria are listed and uh, there's space for the applicant to answer. Um, I, I do appreciate the, the effort to uh, cite specific sections of the, the bylaw that are applicable. Um, it looks like uh, we may have, the citations might have been from an earlier version of the bylaw. Um, just basically the, you know, it was reorganized and the section numbers are different. Um, I mean, not an issue here, but uh, just for, you know, just, I mentioned this for, so the applicant is aware and if they never you know, ever need to come back before us in the future for a different project. So, um, Regard as far as questions, so in terms of what is the total square footage of total square footage of the projection into the minimum yard? I gather the intention is to make the porch twenty feet by six feet. Twenty point one by six feet, yes. Twenty point one by six, and it's one. So twenty by one point nine would be the actual projection. That is correct. Okay, so about thirty nine square feet. Correct. No further questions. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> One last look around the board. Seeing none. Um, at this time, I'll open the meeting for public comment. 
Public questions and comments will be taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing our decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. The chair asks of those wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing, please be patient and allow of those wishing to speak for the first time to go ahead of them. Members of the public who wish to speak to digitally raise their hand using the button on the participant tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You'll be called upon by the meeting host. You'll be asked to give your name and address and you'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair. Please remember to speak clearly. Once all public questions and comments have been addressed or the time allocated by the chair has ended, the public comment period will be closed. Board and staff will do our best to show documents um, that are relevant to the discussion. Um, with that, I see um, there's one gentleman with his hand up. Uh, if you could go ahead, sir. Um, uh, I'm Robert Kachuga from 28 Stone Road. Um, I just have a quick question. If the porch is extended, the upper floors in the renovation are extended also? No. Um, Mr. Carrero? No, they're not. Just a porch. Okay. Yeah, it's just it's just a single story porch with a roof over it. Is that correct? Correct. correct. See if I can quickly find this and display it here. <clears throat> This is the front elevation of the proposed of the house. This is the that is correct. Proposed, and then um, this is the side view, and that's this is the the portion here on the front. Correct. Thank you. Are there further questions from the public on this hearing? Around, I see none. If we flip to the second Zoom page, nobody waiting. Okay, so with that, uh, the public comment period for this hearing uh, will be closed. Um, so I ask the board to turn to the um, Uh, the memorandum from the Department of Planning and Community Development, which I will quickly display in a second. Whoops, that is not the right document. That is the zoning bylaws. Let's see if I can do this better this time. Why is this not showing the right? Oh, no, you are seeing it. Okay. Um, so this is the, the house and then the recommendations from the planning and community development. Um, they recommend that the Zoning Board of Appeals request the following materials from the applicant, a completed dimensional and parking information worksheet, um, a completed open space gross floor area information worksheet and plans identifying dimensional details for the proposed porch. Um, and I believe that some of that information I may have. Um, so this is the plan from the applicant um, showing that the it extends six feet and a width of 20 feet. Um, and then as I had, I had prior contact with the applicant who had requested um, to provide some information about the existing conditions, um, the current conditions, which you can see here currently the, the house has no, there's nothing on the front of the house uh, as it's under construction. Uh, and the 
Um, there have been some adjustments to the uh, the application page in regards to um, those items that were identified in the, the memorandum, the dimensional parking information worksheet and the open space growth floor area worksheet. Um, but that was all that um, was requested in the uh, from the Department of Planning and Community Development. Um, is there further comment on this application from the board? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. DuPont. So just by way of clarification, and I apologize because I tried to print out the application materials and for some reason the formatting on it and I, I couldn't do anything with it was, it was a legal size paper, but it was sideways. So I, I don't know how that happens, but it actually happened to two out of the three matters we're dealing with tonight. So I'm not sure exactly what page we're on, but it says the application for special permit is made in accordance with whatever. <laughs> and then it says um, special permit criteria and it describes it. It says renovated front porch with roof to project five feet from the house. And then it makes reference. And I think that the Department of Planning also caught this. And it says existing porch is small and uncovered with no roof. So I just wanted to clarify you know, what that is because it's saying five feet from the house, but I think we're talking about six feet. That's my understanding as well. Mr. Carrero? That is correct, yes. The existing porch that was there, it was literally a set of concrete steps there is about six feet wide and it projected from the house about four feet. So what I'm looking for is six feet for the farmer's porch. Um, not, not five feet. I apologize for that. Okay. And this is a plan that the, the drawing that had been provided. Um, this was, uh, Mr. Carrero, I believe this is the condition prior to um, the renovation and it shows the existing porch, which was. That, that was the proposed porch with no roof covering on it. Of course, as soon as, you know. We put, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. So I just wanted to give it some covering. Okay. For me to feel like the porch was worth usable space, the four feet was just a little tight. And again, it's based on experience because my house, my, my father's porch is four feet. My wife don't really sit out there because it's just a little too small. Mr. Okay. Chairman? Yes, please. Um, this is Pat. Um, <clears throat> this sort of is picking up a little bit on Mr. DuPont's comment, but assuming that if the board were to approve this, we usually approve, we usually have a condition requiring uh, the, re requiring the uh, uh, action that we're authorizing to be done in accordance with uh, certain plans. And I want to make clear since there are various plans asking for various things that are, that are somewhere in this application that we understand and everybody understands exactly which is which is the thing that we're there to be that's there to be approved um and so i just want to i assume that it's what you just showed that has the word family room prominently put on it and there's a there's a notation here of a, for a six foot porch and there's also the elevations but i just i just would like to make sure that we understand which are the documents that are being approved as part of this application and which are documents that relate to something else and that are not operative at this point i wonder if mr valarelli can help with that Yes, Mr. Hanlon. So the applicant has um, started a construction project. All the stuff he's doing now is by right. And what he wants to do is um, just increase the size of the front entry, a uh, farmer's porch, if you will, uh, to project six feet off of the foundation by 20 feet wide. And that will um, project into the minimum front yard setback instead of it being 25 feet as required, I think it will be 23 and change. But um, everything else the applicant is doing is by right. I hope I answered your question. Um, and just in terms of the papers we have before us, we have one thing that has a prominent notation, six feet off the house. 
which is a kind of a plan view. Um, and we have another one, the elevations that were shown earlier. Are those the documents that he's, that the applicant is supposed to be observing as, as he installs this porch? Yes, so unfortunately there is a little bit of confusion with the, um, uh, the application and the information that's on the application. But in fact, what the board is or may consider tonight for approval is in fact a farmer's porch that projects no more than six feet off of the foundation line in the front of the house and is no wider than 20 feet. I have a um, question, Mr. Chairman. The, yes, it, uh, and this may be to, for you, Rick. Is the, is the request six feet off of the foundation or off of the face of the building? Because it looks like when you look at the uh, left elevation on sheet one, that the face of the building projects about two feet in front of the uh, basement wall, and then the porch projects six feet in front of the the, um, the the wood frame wall. So that would put it about eight feet off the foundation. So I'm just trying to make sure I understand what the dimension is supposed to be tied to. So Mr. Carrero, you can address that. And um, just keep in mind that the board is looking to be uh, very precise on what you are proposing. Yes, so the projection of six feet is off the face of the building, which is the furthest point of the building and not the section that is can that that is set back, as you can see from the side elevation. So right now, the setback it's, is from the face of the building, not from the foundation, it's from the face, overall face of the building. Okay. Maybe it's just some language that needs to be clarified in the in the in the request, which is uh, I think was said to be six feet off the foundation. Well, that's that probably needs to be fixed. Okay. Okay. So that will then bring. Are there further comments or questions from the board? Okay. Um, Actually, one, uh, one, Mr. Steve Robillock, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, going back to the planning department memo uh, regarding the dimensional worksheets. Now, I know we're just considering a porch. Yep. But, and it is a rather small, it is a, it is a, you know, it's not a big protrusion into the front yard. We're looking at 40 square feet. But, you know, technically, you know, that is removal of open space or landscaped of some sort of open space from the front yard. And I, I would be curious if how the board members would uh, feel about a condition that the, uh, you know, that open that open space calculations be provided and be confirmed by inspectional services to comport with the dimensional regulations for the district. I believe that sounds appropriate. Okay, so the board has, uh, we have sort of three standard conditions that we apply to special permits. Um, the first reads, the final plans and specifications approved by the board for the permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There should be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, the second is the building inspector is hereby notified that he is to monitor the site should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time he determines that violations are present and the inspector of buildings shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw under the provisions of chapter 40 section 21 d and institute non-criminal complaints if necessary the inspector of buildings may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1 uh, and number three is the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to this special permit grant um, and then the, there are other conditions that we have um, sometimes applied. So the two that 
uh, sound to me to sort of address the questions that have been raised by the board. Uh, one is the applicant is to provide a site plan indicating and dimensioning the area or areas of the existing and proposed site that comply with the requirements for usable open space as indicated in section two of the zoning bylaw of the town of Arlington and in special services department for review and approval. And the other would be is that the applicant is to provide a revised and signed dimensional and parking information and open space slash gross floor area sheets, correcting any deficiencies discussed at the hearing to the inspectional services department for review. Um, are there any further conditions that the board would ask to consider? Mr. Chairman? Yes, please, Mr. DuPont. Uh, just along the lines of what uh, Mr. Ford had mentioned, is it something that we should consider having language that uh, references the fact that that six feet is being measured from the front of the building and not the foundation? We can certainly and, do that. And, and the reason I asked that question is, do we have a plan that explicitly shows that? I, I'm again, not sure that I saw that, but it may well be there. So did we have sufficient, if we're saying build according to this particular plan, do we have that particular plan that demonstrates the six feet by 20 feet away from the face of the building. So we have this document. So it's just gonna be in accordance with the plan that's been submitted. Yeah. Okay. So if I say uh, the border sticks the front porch to the dimensions presented on 12 underscore Christine underscore front underscore porch underscore size dot PDF as submitted. And then that would restrict it to these, these dimensions, six feet off the house and 20 feet side to side. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Hanlon. Just just so that as just a means of advice is that uh, both in the discussion we just had and ultimately in writing the opinion, it's helpful to put a title on these documents so that it can be unambiguously referred to without looking at the uh, at the file name from the computer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Carrero to take note of that and to do that in the future. Will do, thank you. Very good. Is there any further comment or question from the board? Uh, ask for a motion from the board in regards to uh, this application. Mr. Chairman. Hanlon. Uh, I move that the application be approved subject to the conditions that you've just read. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Um, so in the absence of, of um, Mr. O'Rourke, I will ask uh, Mr. Revlak to vote on this application. Um, so we have a full quorum of five. Uh, so the motion is to approve uh, with the conditions um, that were previously indicated. Uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Mr. Revelak. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The application is approved uh, with the conditions stipulated. Thank you very much. Thank you, board. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay, this brings us to agenda item number six, which is docket 3655, 34 Marathon Road. 
Um, and so if I could ask the applicants to identify themselves and tell us what they would like to do. Betsy and Frank McGovern. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank, thank you, Mr. Klein and members of the board. Uh, we're, we own 34 Marathon Street and uh, we have a daughter who lives there. Uh, she's lived there since we've owned it. Uh, and we would like to construct two small dormers within the footprint of the house on the third floor. The third floor currently has one bedroom. It has walk up stairs already there. Uh, one bedroom, but there's no bathroom on the on the third floor. And we'd like to construct two small dormers to be able to put a bathroom and uh, and then a work area. So uh, so somebody working remote could work work within that. Uh, the the dormers, uh, let's see, it's this house will it's in in our family and like I said, we our daughter lives there. Um, we're also planning to completely redo the outside of the house. If anyone's driven by, uh, the shingles are in pretty disrepair. Uh, and so we're, we're planning to completely uh, re-shingle, re-side the house and, as well, uh, so that it will look much better from the curbside appeal. Um, and and no, no change to the footprint. Um, I will just briefly put up on the screen here so this is a set of plans that was provided by the architect. Um, so this is the existing house. This is the existing upper floor. So this, these are the two dormers that are being proposed. Um, so this is the current front elevation. And this is the proposed elevation with the addition of the dormer. This is the existing side elevation and the proposed side elevation with the two small shed dormers. Uh, and this is a perspective of the current house and the perspective with the addition of the two dormers. Are there questions and comments from the board? Mr. Mills. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Chair. Did we get an accurate estimate on the uh, space under seven foot on the attic with the dormers in place? Um, we have. I thought that was an outstanding question. The have from the applicant as a part of their application an indication um, <clears throat> that the proposed upper floor um, so the second floor is listed as 1017 square feet and the third floor is listed as being 186 square feet um, and it appears from this that they are well, then. that they are a, that the, the listed square footage for the third floor would be 705 square feet, which would be in excess of the 50% of the floor below. Uh, but they have not provided a specific plan that or section that indicates exactly what the the area in the proposed uh, uh, attic floor would be. Mr. Valarelli, do you have any? Other information from the applicant that would clarify the actual square footage of the attic floor? I do not. I noted that the application, the numbers are, are incorrect. Um, okay. But uh, nevertheless, the um, the board could approve uh, pending the um, the attic space doesn't exceed a half story. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Uh, I also noticed that the uh, the version of the open space floor, gross floor area uh, form that was filled out uh, also it, it is, was apparently an out of date one and it includes uh, the, uh, 
seven feet three inches as oh, it I once see. was. Yeah. Uh, which raises a question as to exactly what it is that is actually being reported there. If that if 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 they were actually doing that uh, rather than following the seven feet rule that we now have, those numbers would be would be incorrect in a way that would be hard to tell uh, what they are. Uh, mm -hmm. So for that reason also, I would be concerned to make sure that we're we're uh, we're okay with this and make sure that these are uh, uh, that these are right. Um, procedurally, basically if if this isn't right and we've got a problem here mm -hmm. and we approve this the applicant has to come back to us for an amendment of its of the special permit uh what, what i'm trying to i don't see any i'm trying to figure out a way of handling this and being sure that we're with that we're conforming with the bylaw without imposing on the applicant extra steps that would just delay this far more than is necessary uh, uh, because we don't have this clear right now. Mm -hmm. And I just would like to throw it up to my colleagues. Uh, if, it, if it's possible to get this to get this resolved in a few days uh, and we could come back and know when we're giving this per the permit rather than taking a risk that there'll be a problem later on that will be another month or six weeks of delay that we might be it might be better to do that, but I, I leave it up to the suggestions of others. I just would like the procedure to be as mm -hmm. as smooth and as efficient as possible and not to cause unnecessary hardship. Mr. Valarelli, um, if, if the board was to approve this with the condition that the, that the, the applicant provide documentation showing uh, conformance with the half story requirement for an attic and um, they are unable to to meet that criteria what would happen at inspectional services well the board needs approval uh, i'm sorry the applicant needs approval for, from the board to increase the nonconformity due to the lack of open space usable inspectional services still has a whole checklist of things mm -hmm. that are going to apply to this job and every job that comes before them so uh, the only thing that's stopping them that way that the special services has no control over is the fact they're extending the nonconformity due to lack of usable open space. Um, ISD will check, make sure that the attic space does not exceed a half story. Um, we have had instances where they did exceed it when they were told not to, and they have come back before the board uh, very rarely. So to answer your question, uh, if the board approves this, inspectional services has all the other stuff, uh, too, okay. numer too numerous to mention. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. DuPont. So it's just a matter of, it seems to me, custom. I, I mean, normally, if we do have a question that uh, in, involves the dimensional part of an application and we're not clear on what it is. In the past, I feel like we've always said uh, to come back to us with more concrete information and without unreasonable delay. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's what Mr. Hanlon was also saying, but I'm just concerned that if on the one hand we were to say, yeah, we agree and we'll approve this subject to making sure that it meets the requirements for seven feet and a half story, that somehow, if in fact it were way off, you might have a situation where that they really couldn't do what it was that they proposed to do. And that seems to be sort of the tail wagging the dog to me. I'd rather have somebody come back in and say, here, we've clarified this and we've confirmed that this meets the seven feet requirement and therefore now you can go ahead and vote. And the other question I have is I'm not entirely sure, and I know that these forms are confusing, but on one of the pages, it says that landscaped open per, um, space percentage, and it gives a number of 3,265, and that's repeated four times. And so I guess, you know, we're always wondering about whether or not they have any usable open space to begin with. And I'm not sure that that's clear. And so I'd like to know whether that is clear because most of the time they don't and we don't worry about it. 
But if they did somehow, I think then we'd be having to take that into account as well. Okay. So my preference is better data and then be able to make a decision. Okay. I wonder, Mr. Chairman, if mm -hmm. I mean, this, uh, I, you know, inspectional services is always very helpful. And I wonder if the applicant could just work with Mr. Valorelli to get this clear uh, and make sure that they're following the, the rules and do the calculation. I'm guessing actually it's going to turn out to be okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it isn't, Mr. Valerelli could help them with 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 what to do about that. Uh, and if we took, I mean, we're meeting practically every week between now and <laughs> mm -hmm. so you know, if if you could take a little bit of time, get it right with the help of of the inspectional services department, and then come back and we can give a clear approval with that won't have any problems in the future, mm -hmm. the applicant might be better off with that. Mr. Valerelli, would you have an opportunity um, between now and the 25th of May to assist the applicant with that? Yes, Mr. Chairman, absolutely. Mr. Revelak? Yeah, I mean, going back to usable, going back to open space, I mean, the, um, the amount provided on the worksheet, um, I don't think could possibly be right. Uh, I, looking at the plot plan, uh, the, the surveyor's plan. Um, I mean, the question of whether this lot has usable open space really depends on the dimension between the rear, the distance between the rear of the two-story porch and the rear lot line. Um, and I, you know, that's that's kind of a critical piece that we need to know to, you know, to make a determination that there is in fact no usable open space. Um, so I would, yeah, I would like to see that clarified for myself. Mr. Chairman, if I could just, one of the things that I think won't necessarily be clear to everybody watching that watching is that actually it's probably a good thing for the applicant not to have usable open space now because we followed a rule generally that if you have nothing now and you have nothing afterwards, then you haven't made anything worse. And so consequently, uh, we don't care very much about that uh, unless there's something else egregious with the application, which there isn't here. Whereas if you actually had open space and was redu and were reducing the amount of open space you had, which again, I'm not sure would be happening here anyway, but the, but the ratio would be changing because of the increased gross floor area that actually poses a problem. So paradoxically, it might be better from the applicant's point of view, actually not to have any usable open space now uh, than to have some and have the ratio uh, uh, nominally go off the other way. So when Mr. Revelak is making that point, uh, it's really a, a point of helping the applicant if that, if that calculation turns out to be wrong. Um, so just um, for the McGovern's, um, to, uh, I think essentially what we'd be looking to do um, is to request some additional information. So you would need to work with uh, the designer to, um, that they would need to make a, cal a, a calculation on the attic floor um, of the usable, of the actual um, space that is seven feet in elevation or greater. And if they have a question about how to calculate that, Mr. Valorelli can help them uh, make that calculation. Um, and all we would need is just, you know, a single page sheet where they sort of draw out that area and identify it with, a, with the amount of, of floor space that that takes up. Um, and that's all we would need for that, for the, that calculation. And then the other thing we would need is in the rear is just, as Mr. Revelak noted, in the rear yard, we would need the dimension between the garage and the sideline opposite, and the between the porch and the, the edge of the rear and the rear line. Um, I see. May I ask a question? Please. Is the attic space seven feet or greater? Is that what's existing now, or is that what exists with the with the dormer? That would be proposed. proposed. 
the proposed. Okay. The proposed. Yeah, with the with the with the dormer. With the dormer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that that footprint, so to speak, should be fifty percent of the floor below. That's correct. Or less. Or less. Or less. Or less. Okay. Yeah, I like to follow the rules, and I'd rather. Does that include like closet space and everything? So it's everything that the height is seven feet from the finished floor to the underside of the roof structure. Okay. So if there, so if it's if the if there's like a hung ceiling that doesn't count, it comes to the structure. Okay. And so the the designer should be able to figure out, you know, just sort of lay it out on his computer and give you a number. Okay. Okay, got it. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, Chairman, if I, if I may for a second. Mr. Vellarelli? Yeah, Mr. McGovern, I can help you with that. If you can just email me to the uh, ZBA website, I can step you through it. We can get this solved pretty quick. Oh, okay. thank you very much. I, yeah, that was something I, I was, I honestly, I take that responsibility. I was a little confused as to how to calculate that whether it was the pre or more, whether it was the post mm -hmm. and well and how much to include because i actually sat down with my brother who's a builder <laughs> and i said pat i can't figure any of this stuff out i don't know any i was on the website yep. that zoning board stuff is like yeah. not 100 pages <laughs> long anywho <laughs> so hard. i'm going to give my brother really bad grief because he said oh. include all the space that's on there on your lot that's not being used they're going to want you know i'm going to help with your ratio and i'm like well apparently not yeah. no. It, it's no, okay. our, no. Trust me, we don't have a whole lot of space on there that is a yard, if that's what you're right. referring to. We have a, we have a big mm -hmm. driveway, mm -hmm. but I can help front you yard, little backyard. I can help you with that fairly quickly without taking okay. of the board's time tonight. We can okay. that right away tomorrow. Thank, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you all. I appreciate oh, your time. Absolutely. You. Um, right. before, we, before we move on, I would like to ask if there's any public comment in relation to, um, <laughs> to this application, if there's any other questions or concerns from the general public. Um, any members of the public wish to speak to this art, to this um, item should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participants tab in the Zoom application. Those calling you by phone, you can dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You'll be called upon by the chair. You'll be asked to give your name and address and be given time for questions and comments. Are there any questions and comments from the public in regards to this application um, for 34 Marathon Street? Ms. Weber? Yes, I'm at 14 Ryder Street in Arlington. I'm just, I wanted to ask um, Mr. Hanlon about the usable space. So I feel like those that don't have usable space could build a skyscraper and those that do have usable space are, are penalized by that. And I wanna kind of, Think, not regarding this um, property at hand, but just the rule in general. I just don't understand it. Hey, Mr. So Chairman, said, uh, go, ahead. Mr. Hammond, go ahead. No, that's a, well, you can do it better than I can. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, I'll do I, my can, best. Uh, I can take a stab at it. Okay, Mr. Revelak. So there are two types of open space in our bylaw. Uh, one is called usable, um, and it's you know primarily for the purpose of you know do of having things like tennis courts and swimming pools and outdoor service activities like laundry and gardening and that sort of thing. So the con now it usable open space has to meet a set of conditions. It's got to be flat and it has to have a minimum horizontal dimension of 25 feet. And now typically in a residential zone, um, 30, uh, a property owner would need usable open space that's equal to like 30% of whatever their gross floor area is. So, so as you add on to the building, the requirement for usable open space increases. Now, where the non-conforming aspect of this comes into play is if a property doesn't have anything, you know, that's 25 feet in diameter, that's free of automotive and vehicular traffic and suitably flat, then you know, the percentage of usable open space is zero. If for a non-conforming parcel, general, you know, the way we've 
the way we treat it by precedent is if you start with 0% usable open space and you end up with 0% usable open space, uh, you have not increased the degree of nonconformity. Now, does this provide an advantage to someone with, um, with who has no usable open space? And yes, it does. Um, but you have to realize that the places where, you know, the parcels that, you know, are in that condition are generally small and you generally, you know, have less room to build. Uh, there are also a number of other regulations like height, um, you know, for example. So you can't, you know, lack of usable open space might allow you to put on a dormer, but it's not going to let you build a skyscraper. Does, uh, does, uh, does that sort of answer the question? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Revlack, and thank you, Ms. Weber, for the question. Any further questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, I will go ahead and close public comment um, for this particular hearing. So I think the recommendation from the board is that we um, ask to continue this hearing um, to a date certain. I would recommend um, that we give the applicant two weeks um, for which should be sufficient time to work with uh, Mr. Valorelli and with their, uh, with their design professionals to uh, come up with the responses to the questions that we have. Um, and I would propose that they be um, added to the agenda for Tuesday, May 25th, uh, which is a, a hearing that's scheduled to start at 7.30 PM. We have one residential item on that. Um, and so this would be an, an easy one to add to that date. Um, is there any further question from the board or the applicant? Thank you. I appreciate all the consideration. Oh, you're quite welcome. Um, so with that, uh, may I have a motion to continue? Chairman. Mr. Hanlon? I move that we continue uh, this, this hearing to a date certain of May 25th at 730. Thank you, may I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Um, so uh, vote of the board, uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Uh, Mr. Revelak? Aye. Mr. Ford? Aye. And the chair votes aye. So we are continued on 34 Marathon Street until Tuesday, May 25th. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, with that, that brings us to item seven on our agenda this evening, which is docket 3656, 53 Pine Ridge Road. Um, while well, I'm uploading documents here in the background, if I could ask the applicant to um, identify himself and um, tell us what they would like to do. Hi, Hello, I'm David Whitney. Uh, thank you, members of the board, for having us tonight. I'm an architect here in town working with Shahrazad and David Poter. They currently live in a smaller house in Arlington, but have bought this house on Pine Ridge, and uh, we seek to expand it and improve it and update it to serve as a, family, as a house for their growing family long into the future. Um, we're proposing a big addition, but everything we're doing is by right. We're complying with all the zoning bylaws. We're here solely because of the size of the, of the addition. We propose to eliminate an existing freestanding garage that is, is non-conforming, is far too close to the property line. Uh, we'll replace it with an attached garage with finished space above. Um, I hope the drawings are clear. Um, we're doing a lot of work on the house. It could be argued that we should tear it down and replace it instead. But it's a charming house with a lot of great details and features. And we're trying to be respectful of that and make it a bigger, better version of itself. We're matching those materials. We're matching those details. Uh, we're trying to taste, stay true to the spirit of the house that's there. I'm just going to quickly bring up the drawings to show everyone. Um, 
Mr. Whitney, I don't know if you want to just walk us quickly through the. Sure, I can talk briefly um, if you can advance. There's the existing site plan. Uh, you see the existing garage uh, that's being highlighted on the right hand side of the page. Um, the house is on a corner. It really addresses both Hawthorne Avenue and Pine Ridge. Uh, if you could press on, please. There's the existing basement. Um, and the next is the existing first floor plan. The shaded um, walls are existing walls that will remain. Uh, the rest of them will get revised and, and um, replaced. We don't change the shape of the house drastically. We don't change the footprint of the existing house drastically, but we're making a lot of changes, rearranging the interior of the house. There is a, a um, attic floor. one finished space on the attic floor. It's it will be far less than fifty percent of the of the footprint of the house. Uh, here's the new site plan showing the proposed addition. The existing non-conforming garage goes away. You see uh, the big black circle at the bottom. That's a pretty great tree that we want to maintain, and so the driveway will curve around it. Here's the new basement plan, the new two car garage attached to the house and you'll enter through to a mudroom then to a new flight of stairs that brings you up into the house. There are existing stairs at the front door that project far, far into the yard, um, halfway to the street and kind of disrupt the front yard. We're replacing them. The front door stays pretty much where it is, but we're reconfiguring the stairs so they'll fit tighter against the house as you see where the cursor is now. Uh, we're going to use the same stones on the on the on the new stairs as is in the existing foundation on the house. New second floor, rearranged bedrooms, and the existing room on the third floor stays mostly as it is, except that the stairs themselves are moving. So you get reconfigured a bit, but still far less than fifty percent. This is the new proposed elevation facing Pine Ridge. You see the, the gambrel shape of the existing roof stays as is, although it, it gets expanded over a larger footprint of the existing house. And then that shape is matched in the addition, um, only rotated 90 degrees out over the new space on the right-hand side of the screen. This is the view from Hawthorne. The proposed addition from this view will lie completely behind the existing house. You won't see it at all. Um, the back of the house, there'll be a small terrace with doors leading out to it. Again, you see that's the existing gambrel shape on the right-hand side of the building. And then the next page, you can see how we're mirroring or matching that shape with the addition. So it'll look like a wing of the original house. Uh, and again, the materials will match the shingles and the clapboards and the details and the eaves, et cetera. And stop the share on that. Thank you very much, Mr. Whitney. Thank you. Um, other questions or comments from the board? Mr. Ravelak. Uh, just a brief question, and um, I just want to make sure I'm understanding the property okay. I took a, took a bike ride over this weekend, and the chain link, there's a chain link fence that uh, runs between the house and the garage. And I just want to confirm that that is not the property line. It's confusing, isn't it? <laughs> it yes, to, yes. <laughs> it's the world that this garage doesn't belong to my clients, but it does. But that's, that, that is their garage. The chain fence will be coming down. Okay, thank you. Uh, that was my question. Okay. Other questions from the board? Mr. Mills. Yes, uh, can I see an existing front elevation of the house, please? Um... If I specifically, have... I believe there are photographs of it in the planning department's report, uh, Mr. Klein. Ah, thank you. Ah, yes, here we go. Thank you. If, if I may speak briefly, um, from that top photograph, you see there's sort of two gamble shapes a larger one and a smaller one, and there's an exposed, there's an open deck there. It's got a full stone foundation and then a railing. What I'm proposing to do is to expand the larger gable, pull it closer to the camera so it subsumes that smaller gable. Uh, the, the house will still sit on that stone foundation that was outdoor porch now will be uh, indoor space. Okay. 
and this is the porch that you had and steps that you had referenced that you were going to be um, yes. changing the direction on to make them shorter. Exactly. Okay. So, excuse me, uh, Mr. Chair. So we're saying Please. that smaller gambrel is going to be extended to the left and become complete, if you will. So I believe there'll be a separate gambrel addition L or an L that's going to come off of looking at the lower image off of this side here. Yes, I've um, got that. But I'm just saying the front elevation is not going to change substantially beyond the porch. Right. I, I think believe what he's saying is that this shape here will go away and it will that this this shape here will be essentially extruded forward to this plane. OK, so the, the front facade will be one. It won't be two planes. It'll be one plane. Mr. Whitney? Yes, the Pine Ridge facade, uh, where you see now two sort of nested gamble shapes, there'll be one large gamble. Yeah, thank you. That was Welcome. my confusion. Okay. I'd like to say the architecture looks very nice. You did a nice job. Thank you very much. Um, so the, the question that I have is in regards to this tree here. Um, which is the second large tree on the lot. Um, which, let me find the site plan. Um, I, I can say, unfortunately, that one will need to go. And I, I honestly don't recall whether it's in the footprint of the addition or so close that it would clearly be endangered by it. That's this one here, this 28 inch tree? Yes, there it is. Okay. So this one here, the 45 inch is the one that you had said would be maintained by having the driveway shifted to go away from it. Yes. Um, but this one here would be we'll, we'll removed. Do. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that. Frankly, his canopy is so big that, that if we were to try and respect the canopy, uh, we wouldn't be able to do anything at all. Are there further questions or comments from the board? I am seeing none. Um, so I'll now open the meeting for public comment. Public questions and comments will be taken as they relate to the matter at hand, to be directed to the board for the purpose of informing the decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. The chair asks those wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing to please be patient and allow those wishing to speak for the first time to go ahead of them. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participants tab of the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You will be called upon by the meeting host. You'll be asked to give your name and address and you'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair. Please remember to speak clearly. Once all public questions and comments have been addressed, the public comment period will be closed. The board and staff will do our best to show documents being discussed. Um, so with that, um, Mr. Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, uh, Piedmont Street. Um, and I'm a member of the Arlington Tree Committee. Um, question about the big tree in front. Uh, it looks, uh, I, I applaud the, uh, the, the owner's desire to, to maintain the large tree. Um, large trees in Arlington are unfortunately a disappearing species as time's going by. And um, however, I, I believe since it's on the plot line, it's a protected tree anyway as a street tree. Um, so it both behooves the owner and the town to maintain, maintain that tree. Question about the tree behind the house that, uh, that Mr. Chairman, you pointed out uh, was pretty close to the addition and I think the developer said was gonna be taken. Um, it's, it's, it looks also like it's very close to the setback. Have you engaged uh, with the tree warden about uh, this project? Uh, Mr. Whitney? No, we haven't, we, we will. Um, you know, as that's one of the steps, any project will have to go through for approval, um, but we haven't yet. Excellent. I uh, thank you uh, through you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank uh, the developer for 
for pursuing that because we're finding increasingly it's, it's important to engage early on before any destruction happens to other trees or the trees that aren't going to be taken are, are uh, appropriately protected during construction. Um, and the, uh, the tree warden also can help with suggestions about how to, uh, to handle various issues that often come up during, during that inspection. So um, there are some magnificent trees on this property and, and uh, we sure appreciate uh, care being taken around them. So thank you and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Are there other questions or comments? Uh, yes, sort of bouncing around here for one second. Okay, um, uh, Ms. Furman and Mr. Wolf. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Juliet Furman and Stan Wolf from 52 Grand View Road. So we're catty cornered to the property. And I was wondering, um, uh, with the plans for the garage, whether there'll be uh, considerable blasting and whether it would in any way affect the foundations, for instance, of neighboring structures. Mr. Whitney, are you aware whether, there's, whether the excavation is anticipated to be in any ledge? Uh, we suspect there may be ledge in the, in the, in the vicinity. The truth is, we just don't know, and we never really know until we excavate. If we, when we excavate, if we encounter ledge, the first step is always to try and break it out without blasting, with hammering and, and, and steps like that. Um, I think it's very unlikely that blasting would be required. If it is, you know, all the requisite protective steps would be taken. Okay. Um, just a quick question for Mr. Valorelli. Are there specific requirements um, and notifications to the abutting neighbors should uh, rock removal be required? Yes, so that's done um, through the fire department. Uh, but uh, looking at the plans, Mr. Whitney, that, that uh, the first floor of this project's a garage that's underneath. So I don't know how far you go down. It doesn't seem to me um, that it will be too bad. But uh, Mr. Chairman, to answer your question, yes, and that blasting permit it is issued by the fire department. If if the if blasting is not required and the the owner wishes to proceed with chipping, is there a notification that's required to the public in that regard? Not specifically for chipping. However, they do have the the good neighbor agreement will take effect with this one, and also the um, construction control measures but the good neighbor agreement. So everybody within a 300 foot radius will know that this project is starting and they will have a contact person if they have any issues with it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Furman. Thank you. Okay. You're very welcome. Um, Next up, um, Mr. Schaller. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Terry Schaller. I'm the owner of the property directly next door uh, at 49 Pine Ridge Road. It's uh, my property line that that existing garage sits virtually on top of. Um, and uh, I, I have a number of concerns uh, about uh, the project here. Um, some of them I think are probably not a appropriate for the, uh, or within the uh, remit of the zoning board. Uh, but I do have considerable problems uh, uh, worried about the construction project itself, when it begins, how long it's going to last. Um, I imagine this can be quite disruptive uh, to the neighborhood in general and uh, to my backyard in particular. Um, so I just wanna get that out on the table as a concern uh, that I have. Um, I also know that other uh, nearby neighbors uh, have raised concerns about construction, the traffic uh, for construction, the busy intersection that's out here uh, without traffic control um, and so on. So there's a series of questions that are sort of all wrapped together there in one. Uh, and my neighbor across the street, Mark Demeray, I see has his hand up as well. And I believe he has written a letter, which I saw on the website uh, earlier. Um, about concerns about construction. Um, so I, I, there's not a particular question buried in there, just a series of, of concerns um, about the effect 
particularly of the construction period itself um, and mitigation of, uh, I, I worry, for example, that landscaping in our yard that is directly against uh, the existing garage is almost certainly to be damaged. I worry about a retaining wall in our yard that's only about three feet, four feet maybe from that existing garage wall. Um, so I just, you know, I, I just hope that there is some way uh, that, that we can come to an agreement about mitigation of the effects. Thank you, Mr. Sh Mr. Schauer, just a uh, question for myself. Um, I believe Hawthorne Street is a private way, is that correct? Yes, Hawthorne I, and, and, and Pine Ridge is also a private way. Pine Ridge way. is also, okay. Okay, thank you. Are there further questions? Mr. Schaller? Oh, that'll do it for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Demery? Uh, uh, yes, thank you. Um, so, sorry, if I just ask the name and address of the record, sorry. Uh, name is Mark Demery, 52 Pine Ridge Road. Um, uh, as was discussed earlier, we I put together a letter uh, just to to uh, hopefully minimize my time, uh, our time on this, uh, on, on the call. But basically uh, I do have a lot of concerns with regard to uh, the, the actual construction process uh, as these are private roads with uh, essentially, you know, not shoulders, no sidewalks in a lot of areas. And we're also at a pinch point here where this is the access for a lot of the neighborhood, uh, not just our street, but all the streets to the north of us and uh, and to the east of Hawthorne uh, that access Robbins Farm and the access uh, Brackett School as well. So we have a lot of uh, a, a lot of people that walk uh, through this corner in order to get access to to that public area. Um, the sight lines are not great, uh, and again, it's a private road. Uh, we struggle on certainly on Pine Ridge Road with you know even small projects uh, because of the width of the road. Uh, again, we don't have shoulders. We have some sidewalks here and there, a little hodgepodge, if you will, of sidewalks. Um, so when we get uh, a project of this size, I start scaling up the number of vehicles, uh, especially with the number of trades that are going to be involved. And especially in the mornings when we have kids walking to school and they're walking down Hawthorne, they're walking up Pine Ridge to this pinch point. And we have a lot of, uh, you know, very busy contractors trying to get their day started. Uh, I want to have a better understanding as to what uh, the town is requiring uh, or what the owners may even have in place for construction controls and for traffic controls for a project this size. I mean, this isn't just putting a new deck on. This is 58%. I mean, I, I forget what the square footage is, but this is going to be probably the biggest home in this area by a long shot. Thank you, uh, Mr. Valarelli. Uh, what what does the inspection services require from the applicant in regards to um, sort of details of the the construction plan um, that would be included in the good neighbor agreement, but that would also sort of explain how they're intending to. Um, to manage uh, traffic and other aspects of the, the construction process. Thank you for that question, Mr. Chairman. So the, also the construction control agreement would also be into play here because it's a large addition. And um, I don't have that document in front of me, but that covers such issues as uh, the uh, start time and the end time for uh, tradespeople and a whole uh, host of issues that was approved by town meeting, I want to say two years ago, that addresses the concerns that uh, Mr. Demeray just uh, put to the uh, put forth to the board. Does that document allow for any adjustments for specific neighborhood differences, or is it a, a specific document that covers all of our? It's a specific document that the, that is um, the responsibility of the contractor to uphold. And I, th I think it covers most of Mr. Demery's concerns. Okay. 
And is it within the, the, the purview of the, the Zoning Board of Appeals to make conditions that would impact the construction process or is that outside our purview? Uh, well, it's, it's part of the process. It, I mean, you can add it as a condition, but it's a standard procedure that a project of this size, the uh, good neighbor agreement and the construction control agreement are both in play. Um, I haven't been able to figure out how to raise my hand. I'm John Morrison, 56 Pine Ridge Road. Could you tell Morrison, us where please. we... I'm sorry? Please proceed. Uh, John Morrison, 56 Pine Ridge Road. Uh, can you tell us where we can find copies of the Good Neighbor Agreement and the Construction Agreement so that we have them and understand what they are? So, I so at this fellow, are they posted at the moment? I know that as a part of the, the notification process, if should this project go forward, those would be provided to uh, abutters and abutters to abutters within 300 feet of the project. Uh, but are those documents available for purview now on the Inspection Services website? They, I believe they're, they can be found on the town laws, not the town zoning bylaws, but the town laws. I can make it a little easier for you, Mr. Morrison. If you, if you can send the ZBA an email with your request, yep. I, can, I can forward those documents to you. Do we have, do I have your email? Yeah, so you'll find that on the It's the ZBA at ArlingtonMA.gov. I'd like to just on this on the legal notice, the, the ZBA website isn't W is it says www.arlington.gov.cba. It's actually Arlington Mass. If you just type in Arlington, you get nowhere. You get a can't go there. No. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that so we can make that correction? Uh, it says W the, at the bottom. It says the ZBA website is www www.arlington.gov slash CBA. It's actually arlingtonma.gov.cba. Thank you very much. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Okay, so then um, where I'm um, on here, where would I find your email, sir? Uh, it should be at the bottom of that uh, legal notice. Um, please direct my questions to zba at town.arlington.mass.us. Nope, .ma.us. Okay. Is that correct? Is that what you're saying? I have ZBA dot, uh, at ZBA at town.arlington.ma.us. That's correct. Okay. So we can send you questions to that email address, yes? Yes, please. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Valerio, just one more question about the, the good neighbor agreement. Does it require a posting of a copy of the notice at the job site? Not to my knowledge, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And one last question. My wife wants to know what's the approximate construction schedule? Will we be bringing this into the winter or, or how long do you think it'll take if you were to get an approval tomorrow? Mr. Whitney, do you have a sense of that? It would be several months before it begins. I've got a lot more drawing to do and then we have to bid and the, you, you may be aware that the construction market is, is crazy busy right now. Uh, it, it could be late this year or next year before construction begins. And do you have a sense as to what the period of construction might be? I suspect the overall duration will probably be six to eight months once it begins. But um, the, the latter half of that will be fairly tame uh, for the neighborhood. Once, once it's framed and the shell is done, um, after that, the work will be inside and, and much quieter and much more contained. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot more drawings to do, does that mean that there'll be another CBA uh, appearance? Uh, no, no. The drawings have to do with details that don't don't affect the CBA. Things things like electrical plans and picking out doorknobs. Yeah. So the, so the additional the additional work on the drawings is is more details and interiors. It does not affect the the exterior portion of the building. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the standard conditions that the board imposes upon its decisions is that the, the documents that we receive will um, be the documents that the, the owner is required to follow through with and any changes, any exterior changes have to be approved in writing by the board. The, the uh, elevation doesn't show any windows in the new uh, extension on the top floor. 
Is that final that there will be no windows in there and there will no not enough headroom to be livable space? Yes, there is no space on the third floor in the addition. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Uh, one of the advantages of having a hearing where several people from the neighborhood come to speak is that uh, it kind of breaks the ice. There's lots of rules and regulations and notices and so forth that have to be given, but possibly the most important thing is this is an opportunity for the uh, applicant and the applicant's uh, architect to hear the concerns. And I would hope that that the process is going to just be a matter of exchanging documents and looking up bylaws that a conversation uh, can ensue that that will help you know resolve certain concerns and and a line of co conversation and sort of a friendly in intercourse coming is co solving a common problem is often a lot better than having this or that rule that does or doesn't favor you. So I'm, I'm kind of hoping that afterwards the applicant and the, the abutters uh, uh, share email addresses themselves and, and open up some communication so that when somebody has a concern, instead of stewing about it, there's a conversation and maybe it can get fixed by people just working things out. Mr. Chairman, may, may I respond? Mr. Whitney. Uh, Mr. Hanlon, thank you for that, for that observation. Uh, I guess I'd like to assure the, the abutting neighbors that great steps will be taken to meet their concerns and to make the process as smooth as possible from their opinion. Um, please don't be thrown off if months pass before you hear from us again, because as I said, there's a lot of drawing to do and bidding and permitting, and it may be many months before it begins. But when it does, the builder will reach out to all of you, uh, will be available to all of you, um, and we'll do everything we can to be as sensitive as possible. Um, by every right, we could tear the house down and start start again, and we wouldn't even need to be here. Um, I hope the fact that we're trying to maintain as much as we can and be respectful of it is an indication of the respect that we've got for this town we all live in. Thank you, Mr. Whitney. Um, Mr. Sonalkar? Hi, this is uh, Pranay Sonalkar. Uh, I live on uh, 30 Hawthorne Ave. Uh, so I'm sort of right, uh, sort of right behind um, this property at 53 Pine Ridge. Uh, and I just wanted to um, say that I, I think the design looks really good, you know, because we'll be looking at it, uh, you know, for as long as we live here. So really pleased with how, how the design has come up. Um, and um, I understand that there will be some pain, especially during uh, uh, the construction. Um, and, you know, uh, but that's something that uh, we have, faith in, uh, you know, we've spoken to the, the owners of the property and we've faith that uh, they will ensure that it will be done properly. So I just want to say it's a great design. We really like it. Um, and uh, they have a full support. Uh, I do agree that um, there will be traffic issues. Uh, just on my, my, my thoughts is that, you know, the more cars that are parked on the street, the slower the traffic, so it might actually be a little safer walking uh, with the construction, but that's, that's uh, that's not the point, but great design. Um, and we're confident that this will be done in a way that uh, it will be good for the neighborhood. So, Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Are there any further questions or comments from the general public? Um, Mr. Teckett, I beg your pardon if I got that wrong. Oh, you're on mute though still, sir. Thank you. Uh, Andy Tackett's uh, live at 48 Pine Ridge Road. My wife Antonelle's here. Um, yeah, I've chatted with a bunch of folks and I, I, you know, I'm glad we surfaced all these things and want to welcome the new neighbors whenever you get here. Um, and I want to thank you for, on behalf of all of us, for removing the chain link fence. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Demery? Uh, yeah, just a, a, a couple clarifications and uh, I will support uh, uh, Andy's uh, previous comment that we have uh, bemoaned for many a year is uh, thank you for moving the chain link fence. Um, but going back to the other issue, uh, I'm still a little unsure as to who, where from the town and who from the town is responsible for, for traffic control. I understand that the 
the general contractor will probably be made responsible for this issue uh, through their 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 contract and their and that type of stuff. But who from the town and 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 what is the the, the process as far as the traffic goes for these? And I, I again apologize. Uh, we we have not had this issue before uh, mm -hmm. on this street or or not had to deal with this before. So I don't even know if the zoning board is the appropriate uh, uh, commission. But uh, uh, it, it, again, the, the, the traffic concerns I have, um, are, I think are very, very real. Are your, are your concerns more in terms of parking or sort of the logistics of moving large things in and out of the neighborhood or just the, the sheer increase in traffic volume or all it, of the it, above? It, it, it's really all of the above again, when we start parking cars, um, it's such a narrow street that um, it certainly does limit the access. Uh, it does limit emergency vehicle access. Occasionally, uh, you know, because we're kind of, we're not a main road, we don't see a lot of people come up, but there's a, a lot of times if people park on both sides of the road, there's no way you're getting any emergency vehicles up and down. Uh, just this morning alone, and we had one person who was having some junk removed. And I think we had another one that had a painter. Uh, the, the road is blocked for five or 10 minutes. Again, when it's something like that, not a big deal. You wait, okay, it'll be done eventually. I'm just concerned with all the trades we're gonna have coming through here. Uh, and, and I know that the architect mentioned that, you know, once it's, it's framed, it'll, it'll seem a lot, well, maybe less noisy, but we're still, as a matter of fact, we'll probably have more trades, more vehicles once it's framed. Um, and we're going to have them at times when people are walking and kids are walking on the street. So, um, it, it, again, I, I'm just very concerned about the safety issue. Um, I know the general contractor may be put in charge of that, but every once in a while, even if he's really good, you know, we, we want to be able to have somebody that we can go to and say, yeah, you know, we got a couple of contractors who are kind of doing their own thing here. Can you kind of take them under your wing and show them how it's supposed to be done? Right. Um, again, having that working conversation, whether it be with somebody from the town, whether it be with the general contractor, um, it probably won't be with the owners themselves just because, you know, that's not what they do. Um, but I would, it would be good, for, I think, for us to have, to know what that process is so that we can work within it. And Mr. Valarelli, is there a specific person in the, in town who sort of addresses these questions of of traffic concerns with regards to construction projects? So the short answer is the police department, but it's, there is no uh, law that says a contractor cannot park on the street and uh, do his work on the project. Uh, the board can impose a condition if they want to that the uh, contractors can park on the property. I'm looking at a front yard here of almost 50 feet in depth with a uh, slope of uh, less than 8%. So uh, certainly if it's a condition, now it's enforceable by inspectional services. Mm -hmm. Other than that, the only requirement for a police detail is gonna be if they have to blast. Okay. Um, obviously with, with all the private ways, the contractor would be limited to parking on this property. They would not be allowed to park on the opposite side of, of either street or farther down the block in any direction. So, you know, if, it, if there's the availability of extra parking on the site, that would probably be helpful. Um, and where the driveway is being, the driveway and garage are being relocated, um, it might be possible once the existing garage has been taken down to utilize that, that slab and the driveway leading to it uh, to move some construction vehicles farther onto the site and possibly the, the new driveway can be utilized um, as well to try to move vehicles off of the off of the street and away from uh, the property lines. Um, Mr. Schaller, for a second time. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just wanted to, to voice, I, when I started off of here, I may have seemed panicked and, and uh, and disconcerted, uh, and I probably was a little bit. Um, I welcome very much Mr. Whitney's uh, suggestion that we begin to uh, have a real dialogue either with him or with the owners, uh, or both. Uh, just uh, looking forward to you know how this is going to all come together, uh, so that we have an opportunity outside 
you know, taking up the time of the ZBA um, to have conversations that, as Mr. Hanlon, I believe, said earlier, might very well be better and more appropriately uh, handled, um, just sort of person to person or in a group meeting or something like that. But uh, I do welcome our new neighbors and like everyone else look very much forward to having that chain link fence disappear. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any more questions or comments from the public at this time? Looking around, I see no raised. Oh. Ms. Weber? Yeah, I'd just like to- um, That's our name and address of the record. Oh, sorry, Ryder Street, um, 14 Ryder Street. I would just like to make a comment about the old growth with the older trees in Arlington. Um, climate change is happening and we need to save as many of the old trees as we can. So I just wanna put that as a town, um, need to put that more central. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Weaver. Anybody further? Seeing none, I will go ahead and close public comment uh, for this hearing. Um, so going back to the board, so we have um, a lot of comment and a lot of, not entirely sure how to wrap all of this into um, the decision in a usable way. Um, it certainly seems like we should condition on the removal of the chain link fence. That seems to be a fairly, con a fairly constant um, request from the neighbors and fairly easy to follow through on. Um, it, it, it sounds like there are, um, in regards to the new construction, um, the actual physical built building um, that the the application seems very reasonable um, and should be fairly easily um, accommodated in the in the neighborhood. Um, it, it's unfortunate about the the 28 inch caliber tree um, that will need to be removed, but that is not within our purview. That's going to have to go through the um, the town's tree warden for uh, discussion and approval. Um, there is there was some um, discussion from the abutting neighbor about some concern in regards to the demolition of the existing garage and the, the possible impact um, on existing uh, landscaping and structures on the neighboring property. Um, and hopefully that is something that um, the contractor can, uh, can work out with that abutting neighbor when they're working um, at the property line. Um, and then in addition to all those really, it seems like most of the concerns are in regards to how the construction will be carried out um, and the impacts that will have on the neighborhood. Um, as Mr. Whitney said that, you know, that won't be happening immediately. That's something that will uh, probably not be happening for at least four to six months um, should, this, uh, should the ZBA give approval to this project. And then um, that would then continue for, uh, as he said, six to eight months beyond that time period would be the actual period of construction. So there's a, there's a lot of time um, on the front end still um, to, uh, you know, for some of these things to be ironed out. Um, I think my question for the board specifically is, are there conditions? Um, so we have our three standard conditions, which we have read earlier this evening. Um, but are there additional conditions that the board feels would be appropriate to add um, to um, a possible approval that would address some of the concerns that were have been raised uh, by the neighbors? Mr. Chairman. Mr. DuPont. So I wasn't entirely clear uh, what the specifics were regarding the concerns that the immediate abutting neighbor on Pine Ridge had. But I do wonder if it's appropriate to add something or if we can just stating that the applicant will um, meet with the abutter to determine what if any um, steps ought to be taken to protect um, you know, the abutter's land because it sounded like that was one of the concerns that was raised. 
So if I have that right, and so if that's appropriate, that might be one thing. And then the other item is, um, as you were speaking with Mr. Valorelli about being able to actually permit parking on the property itself during the course of the construction. And I'm just wondering if the other members of the board feel that it would be appropriate to put in language saying that the contractors would park on the property uh, whenever possible. I realize it's kind of vague, but you know there may be situations where they can't. And, uh, but I do think that it's something that's worth considering. Um, actually, along those lines, um, uh, Mr. Moore, if you're still on the call, um, I would be curious um, in your capacity uh, with the tree committee, what, are there dangers to the other existing trees on the site if we were to allow parking in the lawn during the construction period? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, excellent point. Um, you have to uh, maintain tree protection measures for the critical root zone of the trees. Uh, it is roughly uh, a foot one inch of, of DBA, which is uh, a diameter at breast height, uh, has to equate to uh, one foot radius, uh, one inch DBA for one foot radius. Uh, so in other words, a circle that would be two feet wide around the trunk of a tree, centered on the tree trunk itself, times whatever the inches are. So if it's a 46 inch tree, the root zone is huge. Yeah. That's what forty six feet times two. That's a lot of. That's a lot of. Uh, <laughs> that's half a lot. Um, so you're right. It's a good point that the tree um, could easily be damaged because the, the it is so large in the front yard there. Okay. Um, now that being said, uh, if that chain link fence that you're all talking about, I think surrounds the edge of the property. If they were to bring traffic in via uh, um, is it Hawthorne instead of Pine Ridge mm -hmm. might work okay right, but, thank you Mr. Moore sense of that Mr. Chairman that's that's a very important thing that often is overlooked thank you appreciate that thank you so, so Mr. DuPont then to your to your point we could um, include a condition that would allow parking on the property if we could include indicate um you know outside of a root protection zone consisting of you know one foot per one inch of um uh dba diameter breast height yeah dbh dh i i i messed that up all I, it was <laughs> I knew caliber wasn't quite the right term but so, so could that be then in you know, uh, within with consultation uh, with the tree warden. Because I think that I would be that would be a good way of putting right. it. Yeah. Rather right. than having to actually set down the specific way of measuring. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, that uh, Mr. Hamlin is completely appropriate. Yes, he has all, and he'll recommend how to do the protection as well. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so, so then to Mr. DuPont, so then the two conditions you would want, one would be that the applicant is to meet with the abutting neighbor uh, to discuss protecting existing property. Yes. And then the second would be um, the, the board would allow parking on the property um, in consultation with the, during the, during the period of construction in consultation with the tree warden. Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I wonder if I, I actually kind of liked a little bit the, the flexible language. Uh, if you don't like it, it's, it's weaselly language uh, that we initially uh, started with. We haven't really had, I mean, the, the chairman has pointed out one potential problem. I don't really know what other problems there may be there. And I don't want to sort of over prescribe. 
uh, it may turn out that that there are things that we can't foresee here because nobody has really examined this with any detail that should suggest different solutions or make it undesirable to bring to do things. I I would really like to weigh in in terms of encouraging this uh, and in general discouraging having an adverse effect or having an unnecessary adverse effect on the on the streets. Um, but I don't want to be more prescriptive than we know how to do, given the paucity of information we have on the record before us tonight. Okay. So which, which, which language would you want to change? I would I would say to the to the extent feasible or I mean there, initially when Mr. Dupont suggested something there was a qualifier to the extent feasible or something like that and and that sort of is what what I have in mind and and maybe use the word encourage I just I, you know I want to sort of point things in the right direction without necessarily saying exactly what has to happen because we don't know enough to, uh, to do that. Okay. So you would want us to encourage the applicant to meet with the abutting neighbor to discuss protecting existing property to the greatest extent. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm talking about the, I'm sorry. I, I'm talking about the parking. Oh, uh, thank you with the, as to the abutting neighbor, I mean, I think there's an obligation on the part of the landowner to avoid yes. hurting the property of the, and the idea is simply to make sure that that actually, that conversation happens and there's adequate planning to do that. It, it's really bringing, pe bringing construction stuff onto the property mm -hmm. and how you solve that problem. I, I just don't think that bringing, we don't know enough to know that bringing it as much as possible on the property is, is, uh, the panacea there and wouldn't have unintended consequences that would be worse than having. So I, there's where I would like to see oh, encouraged and to the extent feasible. All right. So instead of allow parking to encourage parking on the property during the period of construction in consultation with the to the greatest extent possible in consultation with the tree warden. Okay. Got it. Um, in regards to the, um, I've seen that the documents that will need to be um, Sent out that Mr. Valorelli noted both the um, the good neighbor agreement, um, but also the uh, the construction notice, the construction control agreement. Um, so those, Mr. Valorelli, those are both things that are are those sent by the applicant or are those sent by the town to the abutting neighbors? No, so those are sent by the applicant, Mr. Chairman, and they they send it by uh, certified mail. Okay. So I so I think in this case it would make sense for us to, although it is already a requirement of the building permit, I think it, unless there's objections from the board, I think it would be appropriate to include it as a condition um, that those that those documents be included uh, or be provided by the applicant per the bylaw. I guess comply with requirements, good neighbor agreement. And provide construction. Document uh, called construction control agreement. As required by town bylaws. Uh, 
Um, and I would also want to include um, encourage applicant to discuss um, No, Mr. Hanlon, what would be good wording for uh, what we would want the applicant to discuss with the neighbors? Is it construction procedures? Construction related procedures? I think that I think that would be all right. I you know one of the things when we actually have a written opinion, we can work on the precise words wordsmithing. I think mm -hmm. it's important now for us to have made a decision on what we want in substance, and then we can try to figure out a, a good way of of saying it. I mean, okay. ultimately, we're looking at the whole complex of things that happens in construction, and that helps remove conflict to the to the extent possible. Uh, in the process of, of, of building this edition. Okay. Mr. Chair, I would have, I would have said um, construction schedule process and procedures, but as Mr. Hanlon says, stated, we can, we have room to fine tune this. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Revelak. So then the, are there any further conditions that the board would like to discuss at this time? Seeing none, um, so then the conditions that we have before us, uh, so the first are the three standard conditions. Uh, number one, the final plans and specifications approved by the board for the permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There should be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, condition two, the building inspector is hereby notified that he is the monitor of the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time he determines that violations are present and the inspector of buildings shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw um, under the provisions of chapter 40, section 21D and institute non-criminal complaints. If necessary, the inspector of buildings may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1. And condition three, the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to this special permit grant. Um, then condition number four will be that the applicant is to meet with the budding neighbors to discuss protection of existing property. Um, uh, number five would be to um, the board encourages parking, uh, to uh, encourages allowing parking on the property during the construction period in consultation with the tree warden to the, um, excuse me, the board <laughs> encourages allowing parking on the property during the construction period to the greatest extent possible in consultation with the tree warden. That was it. Um, and then number six was uh, that the, the applicant shall comply with the requirements of the good neighbor agreement and provide construction control, uh, provide a copy of construction and control agreement as required by town bylaws. And number seven um, would be that the board encourages the applicant to discuss construction schedule processes and procedures uh, with the neighbors prior to the commencement of any construction activities. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, I would probably say prior to and during. I mean, do we? Yeah. The, prior to commencement and during. Okay. So we have seven conditions, um, and we have the application before for us, uh, is there anything further from the board? To Mr. Chairman. To Mr. Hanlon. I just wonder whether, I mean, we, we've, we've now sort of, it's always said that it's not a good idea to see sausages or laws being made. And 
we've we've we're doing a certain amount of seeing laws being made now and i just would like uh mr w to give mr whitney an opportunity to uh, understanding that we haven't necessarily come up come up with precise wording and everything but uh, if if there's any place where he sees us seriously going astray that we may want to rethi rethink, I'd like to give him a chance to bring that to our attention. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Uh, Mr. Whitney? Mr. Hanlon, thank you very much. Um, I'll, I'll say that everything that's been um, for discussion here seems utterly reasonable to me. It does strike me, though, that a lot of these conditions are compelling us to comply with laws and rules that we already have to comply with. Um, for example, we've got to comply with parking rules about where we can park, about how we block streets and things like that. Uh, we've got to use the uh, conform with the good neighbor agreement. We've got to put in the construction controls. Um, we're also going to comply with with uh, uh, employee employee regulations. We're also going to comply with this, you know the, the building uh, code. Um, you know, I, I wonder. Do we need the conditions that you know, that just reiterate rules we have to play by anyway? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I could just sort of comment, I yes, it please. seems to me that it's true that under in some of these situations where it's really a matter of making it clear in the document so that everybody who sees the document will know that we've sort of singled out a particular thing. Um, I I do believe that going forward. And thinking about how we deal with the situation, sometimes not having conditions, but just stating things as part of our findings may be suitable. Uh, uh, but we haven't got experience with doing that yet. Uh, but obviously, we haven't really discussed at this hearing uh, the employment practices and the workers' compensation and all of that. Uh, if somebody wanted to raise it, uh, we, we probably couldn't lawfully do it anyway. But uh, mm -hmm. the important thing here is to is that the people who are here tonight may not be the people that are going to be active on this going forward. Uh, a contractor will be involved to. Uh, and maybe not Mr. Whitney and, and so on. So it, it's useful, I think, to, to have some procedure or other, even if it duplicates other requirements, uh, to make something specific and to draw attention to them because it's an important part of, of maintaining the structure going forward that'll minimize the amount of conflict that exists over what will inevitably be disruptive, at least for a certain period of time. And if, if, if there's something we're asking somebody to do that is really unwise, we shouldn't do it. Uh, I otherwise, think I think we should go forward to, to in, in an attempt to do this. And maybe the board should be thinking itself about different ways of going about doing that as we deal with similar situations in the future. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Whitney? Um, thank you. As I said, I don't think any of the conditions that have been brought up uh, pose any undue constraints on, on us. They're all reasonable points. They're all things we'd likely do in any event. Um, uh, I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, then with that in mind, um, do we have a motion from the board? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I move that the board approve this application subject to the seven conditions that we've previously discussed. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Do I have a second from the board? Second. Thank you, Mr. Revelak. Um, so with that, I'll take the roll call vote of the board. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Um, in the absence of Mr. O'Rourke, Mr. Revelak? Aye. And the chair votes aye, uh, which is an approval. Uh, of the decision, um, excuse me, on the special permit for 53 Pine Ridge Road. So we will um, have a decision written up and that decision will be voted on uh, by the board, um, hopefully by the 25th, if not before. Um, I hate to <laughs> see Mr. Hanlon smiling, knowing that I'm putting pressure on him during town meeting and 40 Bs, but uh, we'll get the written decision uh, back in front of the board as quickly as we can. Thank you all very much. Um, thank you, Mr. Whitney. Thank you so much to all the, the neighbors um, and the, the applicant for all their 
uh, their comment and input this evening. I think it was really very valuable to all of us. Um, that brings us, that was the last hearing of the evening. I just wanted to uh, just review for board members and anyone else who would like uh, just upcoming meetings. Um, so yesterday, Monday, May 10th, we had received new materials from the applicant for Thorndike Place. Um, and we, so we have the continued hearing on Thorndike Place will start at 7.30 p.m. on Thursday, May 13th. Uh, Tuesday, May 18th is the continuance on 1165R Massachusetts Avenue. Um, and the Thursday, May 20th is currently the scheduled date for the close of the public hearing on Thorndike Place. Um, but we can discuss with the applicant on Thursday whether that um, is still an appropriate date. Um, and then Tuesday, May 25th, uh, we have a new hearing and we also now have a continuance um, of, uh, of the Marathon Street hearing. So we'll have those both on the 25th. Um, and then June, Tuesday, June 1st is, uh, so is a continuance date for 1165R Massachusetts Avenue. Um, and that hearing is scheduled to close currently on July 2nd. And those are the dates that we have scheduled for ourselves. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Morris. Oh uh, yeah, Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, those are all at 7.30. Those right. are all at 7.30. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, and for those of you who are finding their Monday and Wednesday nights boring. We have town meetings for the rest of you who'd like to join <laughs> us. It's going to take forever in a day. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that is the that was the so Pine Ridge Road was the last item on our agenda for the evening. Um, so at this point, um, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank everyone for their participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting, especially wish to thank uh, Rick Bella Revely, and Vincent Lee and Kelly Linema for their assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting. Please note the purpose of the board's recording of the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of the proceedings. It is our understanding the recording made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the ZBA's website. Um, <clears throat> and to conclude tonight's meeting, I would look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanley. Do I have a second to adjourn? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Revelak? Aye. Mr. Ford? Aye. And the chair votes aye. The board is adjourned. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Great night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Take care, everybody. Good night. Good night, Rick. Good night, all.